Jade from Sweet Softies here. You may have seen my original Granny Squirt Chicken pattern, which comes with a free video tutorial on my channel and a free written pattern on my blog. Well, here's another take on it. Please welcome the Plush Granny Squirt Chicken. I designed this using plush yarn. You can use it with velvet Chanel yarn or blanket yarn. And it is a cute, soft little chicky that is very squishy. This plush version comes in two sizes. I have the small chicken here and the big chicken. The big one and the small one do have different beaks, different combs, and slightly different tails. So the great thing about this pattern is that it is very beginner friendly. The square is made using my merry-go-round square pattern and it uses only two stitches, single crochet and chains. The free version of this pattern includes the small chicken. If you'd like to get instructions for the big chicken, that is included in the PDF pattern download linked in the description box. The PDF pattern also comes with photo references, so you get a nice step-by-step -step guide there, and it is a way to support me as a pattern designer if you'd like to do so. This extra small chicken here is actually made using cotton yarn um, medium weight cotton yarn and as you can see it is really small and cute and it's the exact same instructions as this um, chicken on the right. So using different uh, yarn weights and different hook sizes will produce different size chickens. For the materials you will need some super bulky weight 6 Chanel velvet yarn or blanket yarn in your desired colors. You'll also need a 5mm crochet hook. You will also need some plastic safety eyes. I used 12mm eyes for the small chicken. And if you're crocheting the big chicken with my um, PDF pattern, you'll need 14mm eyes to get this look. You'll also need a yarn needle, some stuffing, and scissors. Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to crochet this cute little square that you can really make in any size you want. You can also make it in solid colors or switch colors to give it a colorful look. And um, this is a very simple square that uses only two stitches. You just need to know single crochets and chains. Let's go ahead and begin. For round one, you are going to start with two chains. So here I'm going to begin my two chains with a slip knot. And here's the first chain and the second chain. In that second chain from the hook is where you're going to insert all your stitches. So in the second chain, you're going to insert a single crochet and then two chains, one and two. And this is going to be repeated around four times total. That was the first repetition. Here's the second repetition. Single crochet and two chains. Now for the third repetition, single crochet and two chains. And now for the fourth repetition, single crochet and two chains. After that, you have finished round one. For round two, you're going to insert your hook into the first chain two gap. So here's that first single crochet. Right next to it is that chain two gap. I'm going to push my hook in. And now I'm going to actually switch colors for round two. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, you can just keep working in the same color. But I find that switching colors will make it easier to see the different rounds. So here's round two. We're going to do a single crochet, two chains, a single crochet, in that same chain two gap, by the way and then a chain. So all of that was done into that first chain two space. 
We're going to work into that next chain two space now. So skip that single crochet. And in that next chain two space, you're going to insert that single crochet, two chains, single crochet, and a chain. Let's repeat that again. Skip the single crochet and in the chain two gap, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. And last repetition, that last chain two gap is here, single crochet, oops, two chains, single crochet, and chain. And that is that for round number two. We're going to now move on to round three. For round three, insert your hook into that first chain two gap, right in the corner. And in the chain two gaps, you are always going to follow this um, corner direction. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna switch to a different yarn color again, make it easier to see the difference between round two and round three here. So now in this chain two gap, I'm going to single crochet make two chains, single crochet, and chain. Then you'll notice you have one chain one gap coming up. And this is going to make the edge of the square instead of the corner. So when you're in the edge or going into that chain space, you're simply going to do this, a single crochet, and a chain. And now we've come to that corner with the chain two gap again. In that chain two gap, we're going to do single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. Now we're at that flat edge in that chain one gap, just a single crochet and a chain. Now in that chain two gap, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. In that chain one gap, just a single crochet and a chain. And the last corner, chain two gap is going to be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. And last chain one gap. Oops. Single crochet. Then make one chain and you are done with round number three. For round four, again, we're going to insert our hook into that chain two gap. I'm going to change colors now for round number four. Let's see. Let me grab this one here. Okay. And since we're in that chain two gap, we're going to follow the corner directions again. Chain, oh, sorry, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Now we're on the, at the straight edge. Oops, chain, okay. And then in the straight edge, the first chain one gap, we're going to do a single crochet and a chain. Here's another chain one gap, single crochet and a chain. And in that chain two gap or the corner, we're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. And uh, by the way, I've got all these extra yarns, um, yarn colors floating around. I really don't need them to be in my way. And I'm not switching back to these colors, so I'm just going to snip them off and put them away. All right, get these yarns out of the way. Clean up my work area a bit. Okay, much easier to look at now. So on the straight edge, let's keep going. In that chain one gap, 
single crochet and a chain. Next chain one gap, single crochet and a chain. Now in that chain two gap, we're going to do the corner instructions. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. In that chain one space, single crochet, chain, in the chain one space, single crochet, chain, in that chain two space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain. In that chain one space, single crochet and chain, and then in the next chain one space, single crochet and chain. And you're going to keep repeating this pattern around. So make sure you are inserting um, in each chain one gap, you're going to do just a single crochet and a chain. And in each corner or the chain two gaps, you're going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. I'm just going to work around for one last round here, following those instructions. With this, you can make your square as large as you'd like. And I personally love this pattern for um, the granny square chicken because it creates a dense stitch and so you won't have any stuffing poking out if you crochet tightly enough. square is as big as you want it to be, you want to make sure you finish um, at the end of the round after you've gone through all four of the corners. When you make it to the very end, all you need to do is to insert your hook into the chain two gap or the corner and make a slip stitch to join. When you do that slip stitch, you can go ahead and fasten off You'll fasten off with a long tail if you're going to use this tail end to um, sew the granny square to something else. So for the chicken um, pattern, you're going to make sure you have a long tail for one of the squares that you use. If your square is a little, um, as you can see, it's a little bent, you can go ahead and flatten it by pulling on the stitches a bit. Um, it's usually a tension issue, so you can just pull on it and um, that will help loosen up and even out the stitches. For your granny square chicken, um, you are going to make sure you have two little granny squares ready to go. Make sure they are the same size because you will need them to match up. Now, what you will do is, once you have your two squares, Make sure one is um, one does not need a long yarn tail. The other does need a long yarn tail so that you can sew it together. But if you didn't have a long yarn tail for that, it's okay. Just get a new piece of yarn to sew them together. Start off by putting the wrong sides of the granny squares together so that the right sides are facing out. And when you are ready, you are going to sew the, the squares together, stitch by stitch, on three of the edges, three of the sides. So I'm going to sew across one side, two sides, three sides, and leave the last fourth side open. It's important that you leave the last side open. So let's go ahead and do some sewing. And I'm just doing a simple running stitch here, going back and forth from one stitch um, 
on the back to the adjacent stitch in the front layer. And there's no right or wrong, wrong way to stitch these squares together. Sometimes I stitch the outer loops only. Sometimes I stitch the inner loops. It um, just creates a slightly different look on the, uh, at the end, but it's really however you want to do it. A lot of freedom for creativity here. Just know that your chicken is going to look super cute in the end. Here, three sides of my square are sewn. As you can see, the fourth side is still open. We want that to be open in order to make the um, unique granny square chicken shape later. What you're going to do now is have the opening of your square facing the right. And look at the upper left corner of your square. We're going to now make the crown of the chicken. And it's going to take up three stitches. So from the upper left corner, you're going to count over three stitches. One, two, three. You're going to insert your hook into that third stitch and then get the color yarn you want to use for the crown. I'm using this lovely pink. And what you'll do is pull yarn through. And in this first stitch, you're going to chain, double crochet, Oops. All right, there's my double crochet, chain, and then slip stitch all into that same stitch. Now we're going to repeat those instructions, chain, double crochet, oops, hold on, where is I think I skipped a stitch. Should go in here. There we go. All right, then chain and slip stitch into that same stitch. We're repeating that one more time. Chain, double crochet, chain, and slip stitch. And once you finish that, you'll have three little bumps for your chicken's crown. Fasten off with a tail. You're going to pull that yarn tail into the body. You're also going to pull the starting yarn tail into the body. And what I like to do to keep it secure is to just tie those two yarn tails together. It's time to crochet the little beak onto your chicken. You're going to insert your hook one stitch away from the crown. So going down here, I'm going to insert my hook into that next stitch. And um, really the placement is up to you though. If you want to have it lower, you can do that. I like to keep it higher on the head with just a stitch of space. So here, I'm going to attach the color I want for the beak. And to do the beak, you're going to simply chain and insert a single crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to fasten off with a long tail. And you're going to pull your yarn tail back into the body along with the starting yarn tail. Thank you. 
And what you can do is pinch your chicken's beak a little bit to give it some more shape. All right. So that's that for the crown and for the beak. Let's go ahead and add in some plastic safety eyes. Here I have six millimeter plastic safety eyes. You can use any size you want, but for a small chicken, I like to use small eyes. Now just insert your hook, excuse me, insert your eye into the chain two gap at the corner. And you can go ahead and put it lower if you want or higher. I like to put my eyes higher into, um, in between that second to last round from the very edge. So pushing that eye in, you can go ahead and do that for both sides. Like so. And secure your eye using the backings. After you get those eyes in, it's time to stuff your chicken. Let's go ahead and add some stuffing inside. After stuffing, it's time to sew up that bottom, uh, that open fourth side. So what you'll do is take the center of the top and match it with the center of the bottom. So take those two corners and you're going to pinch them together. It will create a triangular shape for your chicken and you're going to basically sew the sides together. So if you have um, a long yarn tail from the center, you can start from the center and work out or you can snip off a new yarn tail and sew from one side to the other. I'm going to go ahead and just start a new um, piece of yarn here. Now we're going to crochet the tail for your little chicken. The tail is going to happen at that back edge where you just seamed together. And it's going to take up three stitches of space. So counting the, um, going from the center, that's going to be where one of the stitches goes. You're going to move one stitch over to the right and insert your hook. That's going to be the first tail feather. And go ahead and grab the yarn you want to use for the tail. For the tail, you're going to pull yarn through, chain two, double crochet, chain two, and slip stitch into the same stitch. creates one tail feather. Now we're going to go into the um, next stitch and I'm putting my hook into the center now. All right. And I'm going to slip stitch here. Now chain two double crochet, chain two, and slip stitch all in that same stitch. Then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch. This is going to make the third tail feather. Hold on, I'm trying to find where 
the next stitch would be okay. Then a slip stitch into that third stitch. And now chain two, double crochet. Chain two and double a slip stitch into the same stitch. Now that you have that third tail feather complete, you are going to fasten off with a long tail that you can weave in. Go ahead and weave in both the starting and the ending yarn tails. And there you have it, the little tail feathers are complete. Here is what your chicken will look like when you are all done. You got the tail feathers there, the crown on the head, the little beak, and it is ready to be cuddled and loved. You can go ahead and turn this cute little hen into a keychain. Or if you use this pattern and make it um, even larger with uh, more rounds for the granny square, um, I recommend checking out my bigger hen here. It's made in the same way, except the crown and the beak and the tail are done slightly differently to accommodate a larger hen. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Happy crocheting! Bye now.